Hello everyone, it's your girl Evangelist Chantel and I'm back again with another video and I am so excited to be here tonight because the, this weekend the enemy thought he could really put fear in my heart where I wouldn't want to speak about prayer because you know that was a very important and one of probably one of the most important conversation that you could have is about prayer and the enemy came on to as far as attacking me so sit tight you know grab your notes and hear what your girl got to say um remember if you're new to my page welcome please subscribe share and like and join the family where we just on a journey to finding christ and open up our eyes because there's a lot of things in this world that would cause us to be blind but the word of god is true and it's alive and it calls you to be awakened so that you won't be lost in this world and today our topic is the importance of prayer and i'm gonna call this part two because i told you i was gonna continue with this because there's a lot of importance in prayer and if people would know that they would understand guys let me tell you something it's just like a car a car without a transmission is it, it, you can't drive it it doesn't operate you know and without our breath we can't live but to understand prayer is the is the breath that we need to live that's why someone without a prayer life is dead is spiritually dead mentally dead physically dead why because they are not aware of their surroundings they're not aware of what's going on their eyes is not open to the spiritual realm and god cannot connect with you in the flesh the only way god can connect with us is in the spiritual realm so it takes when you praying that your prayer is spiritual it's something spiritual and it goes up to the up to the lord god and he breathes it in and the lord listened to it and there's prayers he answered and there's prayer he reject each and every day because he is god and he is no respecter of man all right so one of the importance of prayer i have here is listen to this psalm 4 verse 1 answer me when i call O god of my righteousness you have given me relief when i was in distress be gracious to hear me and hear my prayer what is that telling you that God answered prayer. God connect with people through prayer. So imagine someone without a prayer life. How do you live? How do you breathe? And I got to tell you that I cannot breathe without a prayer life because I know my life would be dead without a prayer life. Understand this. The enemy is, a t is after us each and every day. You see this topic that I'm sharing? On Sunday, I was attacked. I had a very... I had anxiety when I woke up. My heart was beating fast of the dream I had. But I understood the dream. I knew that the enemy was telling me that he was coming with all he got to bring me down. Because I was sharing something that was very prophetic and important. To tell the world that you need to open up your eyes and you need to pray. You need to learn how to pray. You need to learn how to pray. You see all these school shooting our, life, our prayer life has diminished. They have taken it out of the school. They have said we can no longer do this because this person don't accept. Well, guess what? You can take it out. And it's okay because God is a God of free will. But no, there's chaos without a prayer life. Ooh. Without a prayer life, your life is tormented by demons. And you won't understand why you're so depressed and oppressed. But it takes when you pray that God will reveal to you the things of the spirit. What is going on in the spiritual realm. Let me let y'all understand how powerful prayer was. Okay. Honestly, I could just look at my son and see my ordinary, beautiful son. And I watch him and I love him. But as I fall asleep. I noticed that about like 15 people who had on all black, white, white men, but I, they came for my son, my baby boy, and they say they're going to take my son. 
But for some reason, my prayer life was so powerful at that time. I, my prayer life was so strong. In the dream, and I always told my husband, I used to tell my husband, you sleep too much. Sometimes you got to stay up so you can pray. Because sometimes you don't know the enemy is after your children while they're sleeping. He's creeping. Remember, let me, let, me, let me give y'all on this secret. At night, the enemy come out more. <clears throat> so that's why I create a real Christian. They're restless. They're tired. Because they have to stay up and they have to pray, pray, pray. Because they know at night is the warlock's time, is the witch's time, is the um, is the curse's time. Is the time where they doing divination. Is the time where they trying to at twelve a.m. trying to call into all these demons and these God from these weird places. Is the time that the enemy come out from the hiding place. Because God is a God of light. So the enemy has to respect the light. The enemy going to attack you in the daytime. <laughs> but at night, <laughs> they're going to really get you. Really get you. Really, really get you. Because you know why? Because you're so sleeping. This is the time where you're weak. is because you're drowsy. You're tired. You're sleeping. And I understood that. I understand. So I'm in the house. And I just had such a strong prayer life. And in a dream, you know where, you, where I saw myself? When these people came and asked me for my son, I saw myself already seeing them before they even saw me. So I opened up the window, and here I am standing. And I, the Lord already put a sword in my hand because he already prepared me for the war. He already prepared me for what was about to happen. Come on. So sometimes you see your kids giving you problems and situations and acting up. It's not them all the time. It's these demons that's after their life to destroy them, to kill them, to make them not prosper in the plan and prosperity that God has has wanted for them. So here I am. I got a sword in my hand, and they all just standing there. I look back, my husband's asleep. And I say, oh, I looked at him, and I said, always sleeping. Even in a dream, I was like, always sleeping. And, and I'm here by myself. But for some reason, I had that power and dominion and authority. I wasn't afraid of none one of them. And I was fighting them. I was fighting them in the dream. I never backed down. I never fell down against these people. Because you know why? It was not the power of me. I have nothing to do with what was going on in my dream. With the strength and the power and the sword. This was all the power of God. This was the... This was the spiritual warfare. This is the spirit of God sending his angels to fight for me. So even though I'm the one standing up, but I have a force, I have a power that's with me. Hallelujah. That's controlling me. Without a prayer life, you're dead because you have no heartbeat. And as a Christian, you have no heartbeat. You're in a coma. You're, you're, you're sleeping without a prayer life. And I just woke up in a dream and I grabbed my son on, in real life. And I started to pray because there's some dream that God will reveal to you. But it only takes by when you praying that God can communicate with you. He cannot communicate with you if you're not praying. So you going on your day and you say, you uh, mm -hmm. our father, which are. And that's all you got to say. That's all you're going to get too. You have to have a prayer life. A prayer life is essential for a Christian person. Someone who's a believer of Christ, someone who follows Christ, someone who follow God, the word of God, the principle of life. You know that you understand that prayer is essential for your life. All these churches that, that are dead and dying right now is because the when I OK, I examine. I used to watch my church when I was young and I said, like, what happened? It was so lit and everything. But I remember the prayer life back then was so profound and powerful. We had midnight prayer. We had prayer in the morning on Saturday morning. We had people was coming because people were thirsty. People were hungry for the power of God, for the healing of God, for the miracles of God, for the supernatural touch. Good morning, baby. For the good afternoon, I mean, for the supernatural touch of God. So they were, they were hungry. So they, they came to these events. They came to the revival. Revivals was packed. But now everybody's living like they maintain their breath of life. They have the power to stand up because they did it. They have the day in front of everything because they tell you that this is my 
my life, I can do whatever I want. But I'm here to tell you that you are lost. Let me tell you, there's two type of people that's ruling our life. You know how we have the breath of life? There's two type of spirits. We're spirit beings. Even though you're in the flesh right now, this is temporary. What you see outside is temporary. We're spiritual beings. So it's either two places. Is You're either a good spirit or you're a bad spirit. Why are you a good spirit? By the deeds. By what you do. How you talk. How you act. Your heart. How you, if you love people. If you care. If you a giver. But if you have murder. Shooting. You know, acting in evilness. You know who your father is. The Bible declares that. So as you're praying... Come on, sire. As you're praying, you know that we're our, our flesh calls us to be weak sometimes. And sometimes we that's why God say, with a prayer life, you can defeat temptation. With a prayer life, you can defeat, you can defeat sicknesses, you can defeat the spirit of poverty, you can prosper in the word of God, you can prosper mentally, physically, emotionally, naturally, nowly. You can prosper. And I can give you an example. I remember when I bought my first house, it must have costed me like, I was working $12, $12.63. When I left that job, I probably was making $12.63. But in my heart, I was always a prayer warrior. And I would see these beautiful houses because it was one of my dreams. And I must have been like 23 or something, 23 or 22. And I said, God, I want a beautiful home. I do. And I believe in your word. I believe I can have it. And I just started praying to God about it. And all of a sudden, I started looking at homes. And God was speaking through me. And he gave me my heart desire. But I had to pray about it. I couldn't just say, okay, I'm for the door. I'm for the wait till I get a good job. for the wait till... I get paid $50 an hour. I'm, I'm for the way to. It doesn't belong to you. Nothing. God makes us think we run show when he tell you, he give you free will. You, we don't run no show. And I'm telling y'all the truth. We don't run no show. If I could tell you, I could tell you some of my dreams, how powerful God is. It ain't got nothing to do with me. I was just in this dream one day. And I'm just walking, minding my business. And somebody that was, that is, I'm very familiar with. Um, came to me very familiar with and that's why I say sometimes you gotta pray and ask God to reveal your enemies it's not strangers it's people you've real connected to close to it's your bloodline <laughs> and um, they called me and I came to them I came back they were surrounded by men who were dark their spirit was just dark and they were standing behind them and then they gave me a, this person gave me a big bag, a big bag, black bag. I opened it, and it was all my children's clothes that I know they naturally had in real life. And she gave it to me. And I was like, what? Why did you have my kids' clothes? In the dream, I said that. But the way the people who were standing behind her were so upset, I realized they couldn't do anything with it because God didn't allow them. God didn't give them the power. God, God didn't give them the will to do anything. And I need y'all to hear this. Because today I was reading the book of Job. How the devil was telling God I was roaming earth, in and out of earth, seeking who I made of our, Seeking. And he said, did you consider my, my, my son Job? And he said, Job, no, I didn't consider him because you put all that hedge and all that protection around his blessing and him and stuff like that. God did. So that tells you that God does anything he wants to do. He's no respecter of man. Job, the Bible says Job was a, a, a upright man. He was a good man that God loved. He was a God-fearing man. He, he made sacrifices for his children. Job, uh, um, Job, Job did things when he know his children sin. Job was giving, but this was a man with God uh, that had God's heart. 
And God chose to allow the enemy to tip him. So God is no respecter of man. He going to do what he want. The are they make it look like, oh, you can do what you want. You can say what you want. Good luck with all of that. Because that's not true. It's not true. And um, I could just think about my dreams. But that dream on Sunday really feared me. I was afraid. I woke up. My heart was beating fast. And I just said, yeah, I'm back on this video stuff. I'm back to speaking. I'm back to preaching. And the devil is sending me. The devil's telling me he's going to go to war with me. All right, let's go. We got to do this. Let's go. And I was afraid, but I kept going. I went to church and I worshiped. But I kept thinking about the dream till now. When I think about the dream, it was just scary. But one thing I know, I have insurance that the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is with me. And the Lord is showing me. And this person just came in front of my door in the dream to attack me. And the Lord brought the whole sky down on the person. So when you're a child of God, even though you fall, recognize you fall and ask for forgiveness. But seek the Lord face always. The Lord will fight your enemies. The Lord will defeat them when you have a prayer life. Without a prayer life, you cannot save your children. You cannot. Let me tell you how powerful the devil is. God gave him the power. God gave him the power to put sores on Job, to bring health issues on Job. There's some situation y'all going through. It's because you're not praying. It's because you're not praying. Job never cursed God, but he sought to pray. He was speaking to his father. There's a lot of situation you're going through. You just got to speak to your father, the one who created you, the creator of life, the creator of the breath of life, the creator of thus, and thus we came, and thus we shall go, the creator of life and death, the, cre the beginning and the end, the alpha and omega. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes, yeah, so it's like you just have to trust in God. You just have to trust in God because he's powerful and he's amazing. And he will He will show you things when you pray. He will show you your enemies. God will show you your blessing. Let me tell y'all something, how powerful God is. When I bought my house in um, Tamarack, I didn't know I was going to move again. Because I saw the way God gave me the house. You know, my, my husband lost his job. I wasn't getting paid that much. It was like, but I just got so slapped in the face with the Texas house. My husband had no hope, but I had hope. My prayer life never decreases. I may act up and be a fool, but one thing about me, I have a prayer life. It never decreases. And I started to sought the Lord more. And I began to fast and the Lord would reveal to me the things of the spirit. And I told my husband, I'm going to buy a house. And he said, what are you talking about? And I said, I'm going to buy a house. I'm going to walk in faith. And that's what God did. He blessed me with a home. And when I was getting this home, he told me I was moving. I said, I ain't moving. Not in this expensive time. No, what I'm going to get. Uh -uh. I ain't moving. But the Lord had plans for my life. And I remember I did ask him. I said, if you want me to go back to my old church, you got to bring me closer, Lord, because it's too far. You see, God to hear your heart desire because you know why it's not for you it's for his glory he needed me to do an assignment in the church so i had to get to where I, he needed to do let me tell you something when god give you a vision he'll give you provision he wanted me to go to that church so he gave me this house oh my god in the marketplace let me tell you something every little house i was looking at in coral spring it had about like a hundred offers they all have more, way more money than me to give because you have to give extra so that your offer could be even accepted. And the little bit I had to offer was in nothing. But when I came to this house right here, oh, my God. And he knew my taste. He knew I liked it a big room, a large family room. He just knew my taste that I liked it a big house. And what God did, he gave me my heart desire. When I came to this house, there were no, let me tell you something, I didn't have no extra money. There were, when I came in, I asked the lady, how much people, see, she said, you're the first person to see the house. And guess what? The house was not even on the market. And I was the first person to see, and she accepted my offer. 
because you know why? It's not her. It, she, it has nothing to do with her, but it's the power of God. This one, if you're looking for a house, do not go crazy worrying about your credit stuff. Let me tell you, yeah, you have to worry about your credit because God said you have to, you know, you can't eat if you don't work, right? But you can worry about your credit. But what I would tell you is do not go crazy as to far and thinking that you're going to be the one that's getting yourself the house where you have to save the money. No, 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 no. Pray and ask God for the house that you want. Ask God for the house that describe the house to your daddy. Talk to him like you're talking to your daddy. You know, tell him, hey, daddy, I want this and I want that. I always told God I love children. Guess what? He gave me lots of it. And I didn't know that I was going to eat my words, but I sure did eat, eat my words. <laughs> but, you know, there's nothing that you can't ask God in prayer. You need a husband? Tell God. Tell God. I remember when I was young, I had to break up with my ex because he wasn't good. He was a gangster, and it was not what my mom wanted to accept. So I had to break up with him, but I was so devastated because I loved him. And um, I wrote a letter to God, and I planted my letter under the ground, and I prayed. I sat in front of the tree, and I prayed. Without thinking nothing of it, I walked away, and God just answered my prayer. I should have been more description, but I wasn't. But God answered, God answered my prayer. I had a family. God answered my prayer. Gave me a husband. That my family would like. <laughs> it's crazy. God is amazing. He is amazing. He is amazing. But sometimes you got to watch what you ask for because you're going to get what you ask for. And you got to be very, I was in description, but he's going to give you what you ask for. But I just wanted to tell you the importance of prayer today. If you're sick, pray. Seek the Lord God. I remember when I was pregnant with my son, Messiah. I didn't know what was going on with me, but the Lord began to reveal the things in the spirit. What had happened to me? And ever since I found out, I began to pray so hard. I began to fast so hard, and I was delivered. I didn't pray for bad for nobody, but I prayed that God would heal me, and God healed me. When I had cancer, I asked God to give me strength because I, I my kids couldn't be motherless. And God did. He healed me. But sometimes God do, do whatever he want. He could come and talk to you in your dying bed. Sometimes if God is no respecter of man. He's not a genie in the bottle. He's your father. He makes the right decision when you come to him. My life depends on God. Everything I am depend on is my prayers because that's how I communicate with my daddy. Where would I be if I didn't have a prayer life? Where would I be when the children irritate me, when I feel discouraged in my marriage, when I, when I want to walk away from everything, when I'm tired, restless, depressed about everything? Where would I be? I would have been dead. I would have been dead. You know how much thoughts the enemy put in your head? Oh, just drink that 10 pill. Just do this and just kill yourself. No, but it takes the word of God to recognize the enemy for who he is. And that's why you have a prayer life. You have a prayer. When you see something not right in your life, you pray. You ask God to reveal to you what's going on in your life. And you seek his face. You read his word and you pray. God, all oh, God is asking for us to read back his word and you pray. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Hear that? Hear that? Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us as we forgive our debtor, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.
ever and to ever. You glorify him. You thanking him. You giving him back his will that he gave you. You allowing him to use you and you're praying. You worship God when you pray. You worship God. Hallelujah. When you lift his name up. When you say he is worthy of all the praise. Glory to your name. Glory to the Lamb of God that reigns. Hallelujah. Forevermore. You pray. You teach your children how to pray. You have prayer meeting in the house with them. You pray when you need a house. You pray when you're sick. You pray when you're happy. You pray when you're sad. You pray when you're in your marriage. You pray for your children. You pray for work. You pray for the people who's bothering you, affecting you, afflicting you, pressing upon you. You pray for your enemies. You pray for your friends. You pray for your family because this is how God is going to reveal to you their true heart and what they're. Come on, man. Come on, man. Some people say hallelujah, but their heart is evil and cold. And God knows it. God knows our heart. That's why I tell a lot of people, I fall down a lot. I fall short of the glory of God a whole lot. But God knows my heart, how much I love him, how much I worship him, how much I exalt him, how much I give him praise, how much I honor him and give him glory that he deserves. Hallelujah. I'm just so happy to be in the presence of God. And we will continue because I love this prayer. Prayer is important, y'all. If you would know how many enemies is after you, it takes a prayer life to see them by a billion. Remember, the Bible's declare we do not fight against flesh and blood. So what are we fighting the spirit realm? How do you communicate with the spirit realm? In a prayer life. It takes prayer life to communicate with the spirit. It is the telephone to heaven. It is the telephone to the spirit world. It is the telephone. Prayer is calling out to God. Hallelujah. And God only pick up the phones of the one who persevere. Seek him. Search him. And you shall find him. Ask and it will be given. Knock and he will answer the door. So he don't, oh, he don't pick up the phone for everybody. But it takes a prayer life. Hallelujah. To see his commitment. It takes the fasting. Praying. Seeking him. God bless y'all tonight, y'all. I ain't going to keep y'all. I don't know if past my time. But I love you guys. And y'all stay prayed up. Y'all stay prayed up. You see all these videos I'm doing? The enemy is after me. Because I'm revealing the secret of the spirit realm. But I need to save your life. Just like I need to save mine. May y'all have a great day. And God bless y'all. And remember to subscribe, share, and like. And join the family. God bless y'all. And y'all have a good day. Bye.